Hey, what's up? Welcome to Offshore Audio. I'm Andrew, a live sound engineer, and I'm here to bring you tips and tricks to mix better live events. So quite a lot of the time I allude to mixing bands on this channel, but it's not always bands. And a lot of the work that I do is also spoken word events, conferences and things like that, seminars. Now that can range all the way from a couple of people and a PowerPoint slide to full blown streaming. There's video calls with multiple participants going on. And there's a lot to think about when that happens. But no matter what the circumstances are, I want to get in and get my mix going as quickly as possible so that I can focus on any problem solving that comes up. So in this video, I'm going to take you through my mixer setup for mixing conferences and spoken word events. We'll take a look at setting your sort of virtual effects rack so that you've got all of your effects ready to go when you need them, setting all your input channels so that again, your EQ and stuff is sort of ready to go as soon as you need it, your compression is ready to dial in, your gating if you want it, and then setting your buses and things so that if someone pops up and suddenly they do have a stream that needs sound from you, you can just send stuff to that stream and connect it really, really quickly. I'll also share with you guys the show file that I use in the description down below this video. If you're looking for some help with EQing your live events, then I have a gift for you. And that is my three step guide to perfect EQ. It's just a PDF guide that I put together that details my process to EQing live events, EQing sound sources, and sort of how I think about all these things, the three steps that I take every time to make screen shows. So you can head to offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ and get that free guide there. Or you can click the description down below to get to that link. But without further ado, let's dive in. On my preset for conferences, usually when I'm setting it up, I'll take you through a tour. The first thing I do is I head to my effects. And I have a whole reverb set to about two seconds here on my first effects slot. And then I have a stereo delay, which I have assigned to a tap tempo on my second slot. The next four slots are for de-essers, dual de-essers. That's eight channels of de-essing. And they are inserted and ready to go. I'll show you where in a moment. And then the last two, I have graphic EQs. One is available and one is for the main PA. They're set to matrix outputs here. We won't get too much into that. I've got a whole video on routing if you need to know anything about that. Let's move on and talk about the inputs then. I start off with eight microphone inputs, the first two of which are set to handheld microphones. And the next six I have set to headset microphones. What I will do is I will grab a headset and put it on my head. And then I will start speaking into it and I'll select my channel and I'll gain it up until I have a good healthy gain level. I'll bring it into the PA system until I start to hear a little bit of the feedback. And then I'll head to my effects rack. I'll go to my stereographic EQ, which is on my main PA. And then I will just use that to kind of ring out the first couple of frequencies of feedback. It's worth saying that if I'm in a pinch and I have a lot of microphones, I will actually replace these two graphic EQs with more de-essers. And then I will do this process by just selecting the master bus and going to the EQ and using the parametric. And I can do the same for any of the monitors. What I'll then do is I'll go back to my headset microphone. I'll grab the channel EQ. I'll make sure that my filter is on. Usually the filter has to go quite high because the headset is so close to the mouth that there's a lot of proximity effect if you're using a cardioid headset. And then I will set in an EQ to compensate for any additional feedback. Quite often with headsets, I find that it's very, very corrective EQ. I don't tend to have any compression on because I need all the headroom I can get. I will dial it in if I have a bit of room for compression, I'll maybe add a little. I have my gate set to an expander. I set it to expander two, that's the gentlest expander that we have on this mixer. And I'll use that if we have a stream and I want to kind of keep noise to a minimum. Sometimes I have a noisy belt pack. This belt pack here is quite noisy and I want to keep that as low as possible. So I'll dial in an expander. One thing I absolutely will do is I will go to the home screen, over to config, and then I will patch in the de-essers that I talked about, that I rigged up earlier in my effects rack. I will patch them in using the insert point here. So now I have de-essers patched in on every one of the channels. Final thing I'll do is I'll select my channels, and I'll go through them, press down the D-pad, and auto group here, I will say auto group to X. That's just an auto mix group. That means less effort when you're mixing multiple microphones on stage. I've done a video on auto mixers, I'll link to that down below. After that, I will take the handheld microphones and I'll do the whole EQ shebang again with my filter and my corrective EQ and anything else that I think it needs, just using my voice as a template. 
And then this is my starting point for these microphones. So I will copy channel one to channel two. That's my handheld microphones ready. And then I will copy channel three to the rest of the channels for my headset microphones. Now I'm ready to go. This is my starting point and I will fine tune this for whoever is using the microphone. Let's chat about the other inputs. I've got a dedicated stereo input here for an HDMI signal. So when someone plugs into the HDMI cable and uses the screen here, it comes in on these two channels here. I then also have a mini jack here, a stereo channel ready for that. That happens to be rooted from the auxiliary inputs. It's actually here, but you can press select on the channel, go to home, go to config, and you can change the source of each individual channel down here. So my HDMI, my mini jack, and then two stereo channels of VB, just ready for any other sort of sound devices playing in, whatever that might be. I then have two whole layers here that are available for me to do what I want with. That could be extra microphones, that could be a band, who knows, but I have 16 channels ready to go. Let's chat a little about the buses and the DCAs then. My first bus controls my headset microphones as those are the most common ones I've got. Second one is my HDMI, then the auxiliary, the mini jack cable, then the two VBs. And so that means that with these four faders here, I can control everything on the second layer. I don't need to go to that page ever. I then have my DCA for my handhelds to keep it far away from my headsets so there's no mistakes. An available DCA for who knows what. And then I have my effects returns on this DCA so that I can just whack them on and off really, really quickly. Four monitor buses set up that I can route to physical outputs, whether that's for in-ears or it's for wedges on the stage. And I have assigned these soft keys here to be the sends for each one of these buses. So if I want to get microphone one out of this bus, I just hit one. Now I'm sending it to this bus and I can turn this guy up. Hit one again to turn it off. So I've done that for one, two, three, four. Five and six are the effects. So if I quickly need reverb on something, who knows what's happening at spoken word events. If you work at a church, it's quite likely there's some singing going on. So if you need reverb real quick, hit five, turn your microphone up and that's you, you're ready to go. And then of course you have on your DCA, your master control here. For example, you could just hit one, get your reverb right up and then steer it over here using your effects master. I have here a Zoom monitor. What I mean by that is it's the return signal for Zoom conversations. So if someone's having a conversation on Zoom, again, done a whole video on this, I'll show you that. But that's ready to go. It's rooted with all the microphones sent to it as standard. Then I have a stereo stream bus for the unlikely event that someone's sending a stream in stereo. And that has also got all of the microphones going to it as standard. I don't really use this page here, that's just my effects. But let's talk about the matrices. I have a stereo matrix for my front of house. I have a stereo matrix for a recording. In case someone wants a recording, I can route that where I want. And I have my sub on my mono channel here. What that means is that on things like my microphones, I'm not sending the microphones to the sub. If someone gives me something to plug in, an extra VB, I can turn the sub on and turn that up in the sub. And it means I have individual control of each channel, how much of it goes to the sub, and I don't need to send vocals and things to the sub that absolutely don't need to go there. So when I come into a venue, all I need to do is I head to the routing screen and then I can just suit this to what I want, you know? I just need to make sure that where things are plugged in, for example, my outputs, I just need to make sure, for example, that my sub is plugged into output five because that's my mono channel here, post fader there. And then six and seven I have available for my main bus here. And if someone's got a recorder, depending on where they plug it in, I can, of course, send that out of whatever output I want. I just select the output I want, select matrix three and four. But anyway, routing video if you want to know how to do it. So as you can see, there's not actually that much to it, but it takes a little bit of time to get everything ready. The amount of time that that saves me on a job is loads. You know, I just go in and I am ready to go almost immediately. And you can make presets for different types of consoles well, but you can get the preset for this console in the comments down below. Do you use presets? Leave a comment and let me know. Is there anything else that you're wondering about in regards to mixing spoken word events? As I said, I do it quite a lot. I'm really active in the comments. So if there's something you wonder about, just ask me a question down below. And you never know, I might make a whole video about it. But for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.